Good morning everybody, Shlama Amochon. Today I want to demonstrate a way of amplitude modulating a signal without the use of the audio amplifier but using pulse width modulation. So I made a circuit that will do the job. Let's go to see the circuit itself. It's made on a copper board with lots of uh, component spare that I had, I put together. At the moment, I'm getting a power output from this unit, which is displayed on the power meter as being 3 watt of power. Looking uh, closely about the signal, we can see that that the um, that the output is in fact a sine wave, but it comes on and it goes off at certain interval as per pulse width modulation time period. Here's the circuit diagram, shows what it does. I've got the integrator, comparator, and uh, two dividers, and they fit the um, gate switches with the driver, and then uh, IRF 630 power MOSFET, and a transformer which is designed to give me no more than three watts at the moment in a on and off situation or six watt when fully modulated. Also what I have is an output which, uh, which I'll be uh, using to monitor the output of the audio signal on the 50 ohm resistor. Okay, now here's the uh, signal coming out from pulse width modulator. Uh, I've got a triangle wave and then a comparator and they're both nicely have been displayed and um, so the comparator and the integrator the actual signal is coming from the from the divider and the divider is fed mainly from the uh, crystal oscillator so that gives me some synchronization between the driving pulses and the pulse width modulator signal Okay, these are the signals or the uh, pulses coming out which actually drives the MOSFETs. This is the output of the driver circuits. Okay, going back to the circuit diagram, we can see there's a bit of um, time constant delay at the output of the 74HC00. The purpose is that of these two uh, gates is to ensure that the, uh, when the MOSFETs are turned on, they not clash with each other. So there's a bit of delay introduced in each device. So uh, a symmetrical waveform can be formed without any collusion. Looking at the um, waveform diagram for the pulse width modulation, we can see exactly what's happening. There's a triangular waveform coming out and the comparator in between and the actual driving pulses um, that are 16 pulses per every time that the comparator goes positive and that are fed directly into the MOSFETs. Okay, what I'm doing at the moment, I've got a signal generator at one kilohertz and that fits the input of the, uh, of the electronics or input of the uh, integrator, the way that I've done it. And then the output is monitored at the, uh, with the oscilloscope and that can be displayed and uh, observed. These are the signal coming out from the monitor output of the electronic unit. There are sine waves which are fed directly from the, um, as an audio from the uh, signal generator, one kilohertz at the moment. Now I'm gonna do a test on the audio output and uh, see what actually comes out from the uh, unit itself, the transmitter. Um, I've got a, a CD, his name is Avin Akasi. I'll be playing it and also be monitoring the output as um, the quality of the unit and how it, it performs. Okay, I'm going to plug it in, put the CD in, and then I'll be playing it in a moment. 
Okay, I'll be putting the play on. That's a modulation coming out from the monitor circuit. And there's the radio, which is a crystal lock on 1602 kilohertz. Okay, that's the uh, modulation which has been fed on the 50 ohm resistor. And when that goes into antenna, you're going to observe exactly the same. It's not like a typical uh, amplitude modulation. It's just a um, pulse width modulation switching on and off, which goes from 50% of the maximum output to 100%. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any question, let me know about that. Push on, Thanks for watching.